their viewpoint and their interest and their expectations are different. So the administration is usually looking at things from the financial point of view. The patients, of course, are interested in their safety, their convenience, and their comfort. The clinicians, well, they want to be able to order an exam quickly and get a quick report back. And we radiologists, we don't know what we want. Or more precisely, I should say, probably each radiologist has 10 or 20 or 30 different wants and needs. The point I'm trying to make is that the four major stakeholders have different expectations and different points of view. Now, fortunately, artificial intelligence has many different variety of applications. So the problem is not really that there is a shortage of applications of AI. The real problem we faced is what one or two AI applications should we start with and why? Now, if you look at uh, this imaging flow chart, and I got this from the ACR website, uh, these functions like ordering, scheduling, billing, and coding, they are very important, and there are AI applications that apply to them. But I'm sure you would agree that to start out by applying AI to them is not going to generate much enthusiasm or excitement in the medical community. So could we choose one of these core steps here? And those core steps are actually laid out horizontally here where we go from the scanner to the therapy all the way to the treatment. And we started debating in my group as to which step should we first choose the AI application for. Now, we noticed at that time that there was a lot of hype and buzz about uh, AI applications in screening mammography, which would assist the radiologist uh, in, in separating the screening mammograms into two categories, those which have high suspicion and those which are low suspicion. And some of my colleagues wanted to go with that. But over a period of time, we realized that if we start with an application that changes our life, that is radiologist's life only, it's not going to have much impact on the community at large. So ultimately, we decided in the group that we will start with AI applications that in fact meet the needs of the administration, the patients, and the providers. We did not want to lose these three stakeholders in the process of just going with AI application for the radiologists. Now, once we made that choice, uh, we had to select what actual problems will we be solving with AI? And what AI applications are in fact available in the marketplace and which company to go with? Now, you know, the way I'm saying this makes it sound like all of this was sequential. But in fact, many things were happening at the same time. So just about the time we were thinking about all of this, we also learned the fact that in fact, Subtle Medical offers two AI products that address the two topmost problems that we had and we were hoping to solve with AI. The first was the PET-CT scans, and the second was MRI scans. So the problem with PET-CT scans at my institution is it took about 24 minutes of acquisition, which was very long. And the patients became uncomfortable on the scanner table. They would move, which would cause motion artifacts, and sometimes we would have to call them back and inject them with additional dosage, which would increase the cumulative radiation dose and also all of this would decrease the throughput of the scanner. And at my institution, we use the same scanner to do outpatient CT scans. So you can imagine if uh, the PET CTs are taking a long time, then we can do fewer outpatient CT scans. Now we had experimented with reduced time acquisitions, but we found that the images were very noisy. And so we were excited to see that Subtle AI, in fact, offers an opportunity to solve this problem. 
The same thing with MRI scans. The acquisition took very long. The patients became uncomfortable. There was motion artifact, and there was decreased scanner throughput. Again, we had tried to reduce the time of acquisition, but the images were either too noisy or they had low resolution. So again, we were excited to see Subtle's AI products for MRI. At the same time, uh, we had in mind a list of what we want from the AI product and from the company. So the first was that AI application had to be FDA cleared that the application had to integrate seamlessly with our PAC system and workflow. The time for processing had to be short, no upfront big expenditure, which of course pleased the administration a lot. Uh, the installation and the, and the testing of the application should be performed remotely if possible, especially during COVID. And that there was a team ready to help us in case we needed it. The cost of the application was a big consideration and if there was potential for future growth so that the same company, the same vendor is coming out with new AI applications. And of course, you know, to hear from the, the people who had already used the application. So based on all of this, we concluded that subtle medical algorithms for the enhancement of PET and MRI scans uh, were indeed going to meet our needs. And they are called subtle PET and subtle MR and they would increase the throughput, optimize the workflow efficiency, and directly help the patient by improving their comfort. So just, just when we were making all those choices, we were also talking with the other stakeholders. So we had several discussions with the radiology administrator, and she was very pleased because uh, this would increase the throughput for both the PET scanner and for the MRI scanners. Uh, we usually have two meetings per month. Uh, one is called the departmental meeting and the other is the radiologist meeting. And we discussed uh, this issue at both those meetings in the months that followed. We had some discussions with the vice president in charge of imaging. And he introduced this concept to the president of the hospital and to the hospital executive committee. And ultimately, we ended up making a presentation to them. And they were very happy with that, very excited about bringing AI to the hospital. And of course, we discussed uh, at the tumor boards, because after all, cancer patients were involved. And we also discussed with the medical staff and also sent out emails to them. Our IT team uh, also interacted uh, with Subtle's IT team to make it possible to send our short time acquisition images to the cloud and then to have them come back to our PAC system so that the radiologists can read them. Now, Dr. Jane, I believe you accidentally pressed mute. Here, I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you go. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, so so our IT team uh, also interacted with Subtle's IT team to make it possible uh, to send our short acquisition images to the cloud and then have the cloud send us back uh, the enhanced images, which then went to the radiologist for reading. And this integration, in fact, is very smooth and seamless, no matter what your scanner is, whether it is from GE or from Siemens or Philips and so on, and no matter what PAC system you have. And we did not uh, experience any kind of disruption to our workflow. And if you don't like the idea of the cloud, you can have the software installed at your facility, and it was very quick. Now, the reason I show this slide uh, of the actual clinical usage is, uh, is going to become apparent to you in just a minute. So we started doing uh, Subtle PET in October of 2019, and so far we have done approximately 945 patients. And we started doing Subtle MR in October of 2020, and we have done more than 4,400 patients. So, the point is that we are routinely doing patients for subtle PET and subtle MR, hundreds of patients, literally thousands of patients with MR, 
obviously it is so smoothly integrated that it is impossible for us to tell that there is an additional step involved in this whole work process. And this was very important. I'm going to show some PET images to you. And for information's sake, the scanner that we have for PET CT is the GE Discovery. Um, the CT part is 64 slice. So here on your left uh, is a coronal image using the old protocol of 24 minutes. And the middle image, the middle coronal image, is the fast acquisition pet, which was acquired for six minutes. And then the last image on, the, on your right is the enhanced image after it came back from the cloud. If you compare the enhanced image with the original 24-minute image, we at least could not see any difference between the two. And our radiologist, after a while, could not tell them apart. Same thing with the axial scans. Also on the axial scans, we measured the SUV. So for this lesion here on patient's left, the mean SUV was 0.770 for the original scan, and here it was 0.776 for the enhanced image. The maximum was 2.353 here originally, here it was 2.245. Similarly, on this section here, the SUVs values were very close. Generally speaking, it is my understanding that the SUV values on the enhanced images are within 10% of the original images, so plus minus 10%. Here is another patient uh, with a larger body habitus, and we were concerned about this, so we intentionally uh, tested the system initially uh, with different kinds of patients, and one of them was large body habitus. So here on your left is the original image with 24-minute acquisition, and here on your right is the enhanced image after six-minute acquisition. And again, we could not tell the difference between the two. Same thing with the axial uh, images. Uh, again, the SUV value here was 2.642 on the original 24-minute image. And on the enhanced image, it was 2.547 for the mean and here the max was 7.526, here it is 7.759. This third patient, uh, again, the image on the left is the 24-minute image showing some mediastinal adenopathy, and the enhanced image shows the same lesions again. Again, it is difficult to tell them apart. So we concluded that subtle PET allowed us to take the acquisition time down significantly by about one-fourth of the original scan time. We went from 24 minutes down to six minutes. And it was validated on our scanner. But of course, studies have been done previously on many other scanners by subtle. And the benefit was that the patient was more comfortable and I'll show you some of the patient feedback in just a minute. Um, there were fewer rescans, so the clinicians were happy because there was no delay in getting a final actionable report. Uh, improved workflow efficiency. One more issue I wanted to point out is that for younger patients, uh, like those who had lymphoma, instead of reducing the acquisition time, we in fact reduce the FTG dose because they would end up getting many scans and it was important for us to reduce their dose level. So we created uh, these patient satisfaction questionnaire that we would ask uh, patients to fill out after they had uh, their short scans. And they uniformly said that they were really happy with the six minute acquisition especially if we had to do scans where they had to hold their arms up 
that was really difficult for many of these elderly and cancer patients. So one patient said that it was very pleasant and short scan compared to my previous scan. Another patient said, today for the first time I was comfortable during my six minute scan. The third patient said, it is uncomfortable to hold my hands up for a long period of time, but six minutes is okay. And another patient said it was a very good experience. This is the report of the first month of usage. So back from October of 2019, uh, we did 46 PET-CT cases that month um, using subtle PET, and there was approximately 10 hour of time savings in that one month. And that allowed increased throughput of the CT scans that the administration wanted to do. So we, uh, I mean, to summarize with the PET, uh, basically we were happy with the images. We were happy that uh, all the IT part worked smoothly and we were happy that the patients were comfortable and appreciated this. And of course, the administration was happy that they could do more CT scans on the same scanner. Next, we turned our attention to implementation of subtle MRI. And there are two different ways you can do that. By reducing the number of excitations uh, and then using the denoising algorithm, or by reducing the phase matrix and then using the enhancing resolution algorithm. And it does not depend on what kind of MRI scanner you have. It is vendor agnostic. So you could have uh, Siemens, Philips, G, whatever. It works on 99% of all MRI procedures and it is compatible with all downstream applications and calculations and analytics. We have primarily used it for brain and spine. We have done uh, quite a few MSK cases as well and done a few abdomens. Uh, just to let you know what kind of scanners we have in our system, we have one 3T Siemens scanner and the other three are in fact 1.5. And from each scanner, the images go to the cloud and come back to us. So I will show you images uh, with, uh, of the brain images with signal to noise ratio improvement with the subtle MRI enhancement. So the image on your left is the old protocol where the number of averages were two and the scanning time was two minutes and 10 seconds. The image on the right is the enhanced subtle image with number of averages being one and the scan time all, to be half, actually one minute and five seconds. So the same image can be produced essentially in half the time. And this is only for one sequence. Here is an example of axial T2 flare images. So the one on the left, again, the old protocol, the one on the right, enhanced image, there's no difference between the two. This was acquired with two averages this was acquired with one average, a scan time of one minute and 20 seconds. This was with two minutes and 25 seconds. Same thing with axial diffusion weighted images. We went from three excitations to one excitation. The time went from 223 to 101. Now, next I'll show you images of uh, how we reduced uh, the matrix. So here the matrix was only 320 times 128. The time was only one minute, three seconds compared to one minute, 59 seconds. Uh, here we went from 256, 256 to 256, 128. The time was two minutes and 36 seconds compared to four minutes and 42 seconds. Here is a comparison between before and after uh, the enhancement. So this is the FAST protocol before enhancement. Uh, this is the FAST protocol image after enhancement. You can see the difference between the two. This is really blurry. This is another comparison of before and after enhancement, so axial GRE images. And you, again, you can see the sharpness of the image. Now, going on to the spine, 
Uh, we reduce the the number of averages from two to one. Uh, and if you compare the left side with the right side image, there is essentially no difference. Here also we uh, we went from two to one, and again they are comparable. This is for the sagittal star images. Then the axial GRE images, we cut down the number of excitations from two to one. And lumbar spine, you know, I'm not able to see the bottom numbers, but we went from uh, average, three averages to one average uh, for the sagittal T1 uh, acquisitions. And there was significant, you know, reduction in the time of acquisition. For sagittal T2 of the lumbar spine and for sagittal stir, again, there is no difference. And these are the coronal lumbar spine images. I'm going through these images really fast, uh, but if you send me an email, I'll be happy to, sh uh, to discuss them with you further. Um, so our technologists were able to come up with a new protocol uh, for each kind of exam. Uh, this was, so this first column here talks about the time for the routine protocol and then the time required for the subtle protocol with the decreased number of excitations or decreased uh, decreased phase matrix. And then this is the time saving. So for brain without contrast, we went from 16 minutes and 31 seconds to nine minutes and 59 seconds. So a time saving of six minutes and 32 seconds. And on an average for brains and spines, we saw a decrease in time of acquisition between 30% and 50%. So significant decrease when you consider the total number of MRI exams being done. We have done a few uh, MSK cases as well, and we went here from three averages to one average with a scan time going from uh, four minutes and 51 seconds to one minute and 38 seconds and the sagittal images for the knee uh, using diffusion-weighted imaging. And I want to show this slide again to you because this time I want to talk about the time savings in aggregate. So we have done 945 patients since October of 2019, and we saved 18 minutes per patient. That works out to be more than 250 hours of time savings on the PET CT scanner. So you can imagine the delight of the administration that they could use the same scanner to do outpatient CT scans without any problem. Same thing with subtle MR. We have done more than 4,400 patients. If there is a 30 to 50% reduction in time, uh, there is tremendous time savings, and we can do more patients without having to acquire m m more scanners, and also without having to upgrade them continuously to keep up with new short protocols. So in summary, uh, the patients were happy because of improved comfort, uh, and they were more satisfied. We radiologists were very happy because of fewer motion artifacts for both PET and MRI. And of course, the administration was very happy with increased throughput of the scanners. So in the future, I see that, uh, that AI tools will become more widespread. I think most practices will use them in some form or other and there will be an enterprise approach rather than individual scanner approach. And also, this is very important, that those AI applications that impact the bottom line, the return on investment, and the other bottom line, which is patient experience, those, uh, those AI applications will rise above all others. Of course, we radiologists uh, cannot wait to use the AI applications that help us but these other applications probably will have more impact on the system. 
And you should also know that the ACR is making efforts towards establishing standards and benchmarks, which will help uh, our practices choose the AI products. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Jane. We really appreciate you uh, sharing your experience with us today. Uh, we do have a few questions, so I say we just jump right into Q&A. Does that work for you? Yep. Great. Um, so our first, okay, is, uh, is there any reason that you wouldn't use subtle MR and subtle PET for every patient being scanned? I think uh, you can answer that, Dr. Jane. Yeah, you know, we, uh, uh, we are doing subtle MRI mostly uh, for brain and spine, um, uh, some MSK cases. And that has to do with, okay, first of all, we are doing a lot more brain and spine. And secondly, we haven't had a chance yet to turn and to comparison of the original protocol images with the enhanced images. As soon as we are able to do that, we will definitely also include all MSK cases. But we reached 4,446 because we are doing all brains and all spines. As far as pets are concerned, we are doing every single pet uh, with subtle pet scan. And uh, I can quickly add on to that, Anna. <clears throat> so when subtle MR came out as a product, uh, initially our FDA clearance was uh, limited to brain, spine, and knee scans. And that's what we deployed at uh, Middlesex. But as of, um, Q2 last year or Q3 last year, we got FDA clearance to expand the anatomies uh, way beyond brain, spine, and knees. So now we can do abdomen, pelvis, all MSK joints, and much more wider anatomy uh, coverage. So uh, as Dr. Jane suggested, I think they need to do a quick internal QC before they can expand usage. Makes sense. Um, do, uh, Dr. Jane, there's a question. Do you have any plans to expand your use of AI into other modalities and body parts? Yeah, you know, we've, it's very important to, uh, to carry all the stakeholders with you. And they are watching us very closely as to uh, how AI is helping their bottom line. And I think we had to wait for at least a year and a year and a half, demonstrate uh, with that slide, for example, the one that I showed that uh, shows how tremendous an impact it is having before we expand to other areas. Um, have you applied this to MR breast imaging yet? No, so, we have not. Proving you're laughing, why are you? <laughs> Uh, no, that's a great question. And actually, we are in the process of identifying partners that have a lot of breast MR volume and where there is scope for either image quality improvement or acceleration. So for anyone interested, we should have them email info at subtlemedical.com. <laughs> sure. Okay, um, I'll keep going down the, the list here. Um, are you available outside the US? I can answer that. We um, are FDA cleared and CE marked for both products and uh, currently undergoing uh, regulatory approvals in several other uh, countries. So I think uh, if, if you're outside of the EU and US and you're interested in uh, working with us on either product, you can email into info at subtlemedical.com and uh, we'll work with you there and, and keep you updated. Um, here's one, can you speak to the ACR accreditation for the products? Uh, Praveen, would you like to? Sure. Yeah. So we did work with ACR in terms of your sites, uh, equipment ACR accreditation uh, and the subtle MR enhanced images, if you submit them as part of your accreditation, they will pass. So we work with both the ACR uh, accreditation committee directly and also 
third party accreditation firms like uh, West Physics, who do your accreditation phantom scans and clinical scans. Uh, they both uh, took our images and their physicists basically approved the quality of um, you know, the images. So it will pass ACR accreditation. Great. Um, can you speak to do these work on pediatrics? Maybe we can speak to. Sure. The, uh, the answer is yes, uh, both in terms of our product development, as well as testing uh, the data that we use to create our products included pediatric uh, MR as well as pediatric pet. Uh, the kids as small as less than a year old were included in both training and testing of these applications. Uh, so they do work on pediatric uh, population. Great. Um, okay, for brain imaging, what slice thickness do you use? Have you looked at reducing slice thickness? Um, for example, four to five millimeters to three millimeters for 2D and for 3D routine, one millimeter or less. Which one of you would like to take that? I, I can comment on it and Dr. Jen, you please feel free to chime in as well. Uh, at least, uh, you know, when we go to a customer site, our preference is to maintain all the parameters that the radiologists are used to in terms of their image quality and their needs. So we don't touch slice thickness or TRTEs and other image acquisition parameters. We only focus on other ways of accelerating like number of excitations or reducing the phase matrix to acquire the images faster or doing higher parallel imaging factors things that contribute to noise. Having said that, we have had customers that did exactly what uh, you're referring to here. Due to SNR constraints, sometimes they do thick slice imaging, four to five mm, but they did drop to three mm and we were able to sufficiently um, uh, increase the SNR on those thin slice images. Um, on 3D, uh, I would say, we have not gone below one mm isotropic resolution because current uh, currently we are not touching the slice dimension in a 3D acquisition. We are only reducing the resolution in plane. Uh, so to do that, you know, one mm isotropic, ideally we would want to impact the third dimension as well. Great, thank you, Praveen. Um, as you are the radiologist, I think this is uh, for Dr. Jane, who was the hardest in the organization to convince to move forward with uh, your first AI solution? Well, uh, with any new technology, uh, I think the hardest party to convince is the administration uh, because they look at uh, the return on investment and after COVID came along, um, in fact, the revenues had dropped quite a bit. So uh, they were the toughest, but I think the fact that there was a clear cut time saving that allowed us to do more CT scans on outpatients, which we were having problem with before, uh, made it easier for us uh, to convince them. And that is what I was referring to, that if we first started with AI applications that would just help the radiologists, uh, I don't think there would be much excitement in the administration regarding that. But, but this way, it really helped us a great deal. There's a, there's a question about cost. Um, if you're interested in implementing Subtle Pet or Subtle MR, at your facility, um, I would just uh, encourage you to email into info at settlemedical.com and we can uh, discuss what that looks like. Um, there's also a question about individual technologies on um, the OEM. So why, why wouldn't you go with the individual technology? Um, I think either of you can, can answer that versus a third party vendor. 
Yeah, from my point of view, uh, you know, it is very difficult uh, to convince the administration to keep updating the scanners um, because they keep coming out with new software package, new coils uh, to uh, achieve th these goals. But uh, it is really expensive, and the administration doesn't like constantly doing that. This solution, on the other hand, uh, allows us to achieve the same goal, and year after year it will be the same. Of course, it will improve further, but you know what I mean to say is that every six months we don't have to get a new coil or a new software. Yeah, and uh, I, I agree with Dr. Jain's assessment there. From our interactions with customers who have varying scanners at different age, and on different software platforms, even though they are from the same vendor. Uh, sometimes you might have to upgrade the scanner to enjoy the benefits of um, the new software releases like the air, uh, like, you know, AI recons. Uh, but at the same time, some of the vendors or all of the vendors coming out with similar solutions should instill confidence in the radiology community that this is not a one-off and this is the trend uh, that AI-based recon and AI-based workflows are here to stay. So people who are on the fence about AI should, I would say, uh, take a plunge into it as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Good comment. Um, I guess on that note, there's a question about, um, you know, how do you know you're not going to miss a lesion? And, and there's also a question about um, how you specifically evaluated, uh, Dr. Jane, the, the products before implementing it commercially. So maybe you can kind of speak to uh, your experience evaluating Settle um, at your center and what gave you the confidence that uh, you guys could basically turn it on and trust the software to run on its own without being concerned that you're going to miss any pathology. Right. Right. So uh, I can give the answer in two, um, two forms. One is uh, for PET scanning. Uh, there are two of us uh, who read most of the PET scans. So initially, when we did those test cases where we had the old protocol images as well as the new protocol images, um, we compared, both of us compared independently our impression of the enhanced image compared to the original images. And we found that we had one or two small issues, but other than that, we really agreed that uh, the enhanced images looked just like the pet image, the, the, the original images, and we did not miss any of the lesions. But going forward, one of the things that really helped us is the following. Uh, you have old scans on the same patients, and uh, if uh, if you see the disease same as where the old scans used to show, then uh, you are happy. But if supposing uh, nine out of ten lesions uh, still are there, but the tenth is not, then we would be worried about that. So we haven't come across a case like that. And in fact, initially in the first six months, uh, we did, uh, we continued to do a few cases every month where we would check against the original images of 24 minute acquisition. So that helped us a great deal. For MRI, there are three of us, including one neuroradiologist in my group. And uh, we compared, initially we started with brain and we compared each sequence between the original uh, original uh, images and compared them with the enhanced images. And then later on, when we had the spine included as well, we did the same thing. So basically, we did the due diligence in terms of comparing the enhanced images with the original images, both for PET and MRI. Yeah, and uh, just to add to that, as part of the FDA clearance process, even though we say it's a 510K cleared product, all AI uh, enhanced software solutions uh, are scrutinized much more heavily uh, from the FDA side. Uh, 
uh, even though it's a 510k process, they do include a clinical component uh, associated with their evaluation before they give us clearance, which does include uh, us providing a set of scans for each of the anatomies read by multiple board certified uh, radiologists. And they have to sign off saying they have not seen any false positives or false negatives. So all that goes as part of the FDA clearance process. So that kind of instills confidence in our product that it meets the safety and effectiveness criteria set forth by FDA. And then at uh, customer sites, you know, radiologists like Dr. Jain and his colleagues also uh, do their due diligence and uh, we have not found any issues. I'll just add if, um, if, if you're interested in seeing Settle's uh, enhancement capabilities on your specific scanner, uh, we've done so many evaluations and we have so much data at this point that uh, if you email info at Settle Medical and just want to see a deck um, of some examples without having to do uh, an evaluation on your own data, we're happy to send that over um, right away. Um, okay, we'll take one more. Um, the last question actually is, you mentioned that the IT was rather painless. Um, can you speak a little bit more to uh, the deployment process? Was there any additional training for techs or radiologists and, and how simple was that process? I think Praveen can probably address this in detail, but uh, from my point of view, there is no special training or steps involved either for the radiologists or for the technologists. And as I said, since we have done literally thousands of cases now since we started doing them, we really don't even think of any, uh, any additional steps being taken. It has just been absorbed in the whole workflow that we have. Yeah. Um, I can quickly add to that. So when we go to a customer site and interact with our IT team, uh, we go with our um, like you know platform information sheet that tells them specifically what hardware we need on their IT environment. And uh, we do have SOC 2 and HIPAA compliance certification audits. So that tells them that you know our software and as a company, we are compliant with all the international norms for data privacy and security. So they would be more than willing to work with us to set up a server for us. And typically it might take an hour or two on the IT team's part for them to set up a server and less than an hour for Subtle to install our software, connect the scanners, uh, making sure the scanners are communicating with the server and do a, a simulation of the data flow. Um, and on the, on the technologist training side, again, we have been fortunate at Middlesex to have had, uh, you know, Carissa on the PET CT side and David and others on the MR side who helped us tremendously. Uh, we do require some protocol modifications, which which are quite simple, but would require uh, some of the technologies time. And they were, uh, they were fantastic to work with. And we were able to uh, get our protocols up and running in no time. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank Dr. Jane uh, for joining us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your experience with all of our uh, attendees. And thank you, Praveen, for also joining us today for the Q&A. Um, it looks like that is the last question, right? So just thank you for everyone who joined today. If you have an additional questions, Dr. Jane has been so kind to provide his personal email address. Hopefully you don't regret doing that, Dr. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, if you do have any questions uh, for the Subtle Medical team, uh, please do in, in, email into info at subtlemedical.com or you can visit our website and we will respond promptly. Uh, we will post this webinar to our Subtle Insights page on our website so you can go through uh, and watch again or visit some of the other webinars we've posted and we will also follow up with you via email with a link to today's webinar. 
Um, we do try to do an educational webinar in our Subtle Medical Insights series about once a quarter, so we'll be sure to update you and, and uh, keep you updated on the next one. And without further ado, I will go ahead and sign off. So thanks once again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jane. Thanks, Dr. Thank you, Anna. Thank, Thank you. you. All Thank right. you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.